Hey guys, you're watching Jay's Two Cents, and today I'm going to bring you a review of the Sager 9150 gaming laptop. This bad boy weighed in at about three grand, so today we're going to find out just what kind of performance can you expect after shelling out that kind of cash. Alright guys, so let's get right in it. This Sager comes fully loaded from the factory with almost every option available. The processor is an Intel i7-3820QM. Graphics are powered by NVIDIA GTX 680M 4GB model. The display is a gorgeous 15.6 inch LED 1080p with a 95% color gambit. For memory we've got 16GB of DDR3 1600MHz. Hard drive, we have a huge, crucial M4 512 gigabyte solid state drive. And how much is a model like this going to cost you? $2,974. That kind of money, you could buy a small car or even some politicians these days. So get ready to melt some plastic buying this bad boy. I'm pretty impressed with the build quality of this computer. The case is real sturdy for being plastic. It's very strong. It doesn't creak or crack when you hold it. The hinges on the monitor are firm, they hold their position, the screen doesn't wobble. It's got an overall very solid feel. Size-wise, this case is 14.8 inches wide and 10 inches deep. The front of the case is 1.4 inches high and the back of the case is 1.7 inches high and weighs 6.83 pounds including the 8 cell battery. The outside of the case is rubberized which gives it a nice grip and a nice feel. It doesn't feel like you're going to drop the thing or carrying it to and from a LAN party or to your car. But the problem with that is it collects dust really bad. As you can see here in this video, dust is flying by. I live in the desert, so it's dusty, it's windy, and it's just collecting all over the finish of this computer. It's gorgeous, but if you live in a dusty area like I do, it's really going to get on your nerves. And it doesn't even want to wash off very easily or wipe off because of the rubberized material. It really makes the dust stick to it. For security, this model came with a fingerprint reader. It was pretty easy to set up, the software was intuitive, it was very easy to use, and testing the fingerprint reader seemed pretty accurate. The sound in this unit is provided by Ankyo. It sounds wonderful, but we'll get more to that a little bit later during the demonstration. For connectivity, on the left side of the computer we have an IEEE 1394A Firewire port, we have a 10100-1000 Mbps LAN port, we have two USB 3.0s, one of which is a powered USB, we have an eSATA 3.0 USB combo port, followed by a standard SD card reader. On the right side, we have our Blu-ray DVD combo drive, standard analog as well as optical audio connections, a USB 2.0, and a Kensington lock. On the back of the case, we have a DisplayPort 1.1, we have an HDMI 1.4A with HDCP, and a DVI-I connection. The keyboard here feels pretty good, even for gaming, it's easy to type on, even though the keys lack that reverse dome effect where you can easily center your finger on the key, it wasn't so bad. I did fat finger a couple of times. I did bump the wrong key every now and then. It uh, wasn't too bad. Some people might be a little thrown off by it. The keyboard is LED backlit and the colors can be changed through software that's included with the laptop. It has some pretty nifty effects, some waves, some blinks, some lights. You can change the color. In this video here, I just had the wave effect on and I had set the three different quadrants of the three quad quad three I need to go back to math anyway the colors were very customizable and it's definitely going to get you noticed if that's your thing now take a listen of the keyboard clicks and the fans in this computer Now there is one issue I do have with this keyboard. If you look closely on the right side of the keypad, you'll see the enter key, plus key, and the minus key are all slightly raised compared to the rest of the keyboard. Now not only are they slightly raised, but the right side of each of those three keys appears to be higher than the left. I'm inclined to think this is some sort of an assembly defect. I don't think it's a factory defect. Uh, it feels like it's not securely attached. When you push down on those keys, there's a lot more flex than any other keys on the keyboard. 
Some people might say this is a little bit of a nitpick, but if somebody were to pay $3,000 for a laptop, they have the right to nitpick in my opinion. The microphone in this PC is placed in a very strange location. It's located between the keypad and the spacebar. So if you're typing or you're clicking on the mouse or you're moving your finger around the trackpad, it's going to pick up all of those noises. Unfortunately, my brain completely crapped out and I did not get a recording with that. I should have, I didn't, I know, I hear you all saying you are horrible at reviews because I didn't take a recording with the mic and unfortunately I also did not take a video with the webcam. I had very limited time with this unit so I wanted to get as much as the pertinent details out of the way as I could, but when it comes to the microphone and you're planning on using Skype or any other voice chat system without using a headset or an external mic, expect to have some very unhappy people on the other end. They're going to hear every movement you make, they're going to hear every touch you do on the keyboard, it's just really obnoxious. Solid state driving this thing is really fast. From the moment I push start to the moment Windows is up, I don't have time to get a glass of water. Boot time is right around 25 seconds, so I don't know about you, but it's probably not good to time a potty break around starting up your computer. Okay, so the moment we've all been waiting for, how does it actually perform? I went ahead and loaded up the free edition of 3D Mark 11. it's in performance mode. Go ahead and watch this video, I've sped it up 4 times to make it not take quite as long. So no claiming of shenanigans saying I sped up the video, because I'm telling you right now, I sped up the video. Alright, that's not too bad, a 6163, all factory settings, nothing touched, straight out of the box. But I want to see just how much we could actually do with this, so I went ahead and installed Afterburner. And Afterburner, if you're not aware, is a overclock utility for graphics cards. Most people use them on the desktop, most laptops don't even have uh, access to any of the controls for the GPU, and I got a plus 135 megahertz for a total frequency of just under 900 megahertz and a plus 200 on the memory and this is what I got I broke 7000 with the laptop that's incredible so let's see how this actually performs in real life because synthetic benchmarks are only good for a number but how does that actually equate to the gaming experience so let's take a look at the preset video options we've got everything is set to high anti cytropic filter is set to 4x, motion blur is on, anti-aliasing post is on high, that's FXAA for anyone not familiar with Kepler. We are running 60 frames per second, or 60 hertz 1080p on this laptop. The sound is very crisp, very clear. It is set to headphones, let's switch that. TV, hi-fi. Enhanced stereo mode is on. Leave that. Alright, so we're just going to leave it like this. Let's see how we do. Let's turn on the We're going to turn on the on-screen There we go. So as you can see, right off the bat Let's turn the camera here a little bit We are sitting pretty damn close to 60 frames per second on high settings on a laptop, people. Here we go. I am seeing 60 frames per second on high settings. I don't know about you guys. Close quarters, 64 player map. I 
if you can pick up the, the fan sounds there. I know, my first impressions here is this is extremely smooth. I would actually be very hard pressed right now to, to tell you any differences I see between my desktop running a 680 GTX overclock to 1.3 versus this laptop running a 680M. Very smooth. There is no pausing or stuttering whatsoever. Oh, my aiming, my aiming needs an improvement. All right, guys, what we've done is we went ahead and changed all the settings from high to ultra. V-Sync is on, so let's see how it does. Still very fluid, very smooth. Sticking right at 60 frames per second here. See how we do with an explosion. Well, we dropped down into the mid 40s on that explosion. It wasn't extremely noticeable though. I definitely have to give this computer the respect that it deserves. This thing is a beast. It's fast, it's cool, it's efficient, it's quiet. It can play any game you can throw at it from today's standards and probably last you for a couple of years to come. All right, guys, that's all I've got for today. If you've liked today's video, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you in my next video.